Stitching You and More podcast. I'm Amanda, also known as Little Panda 518 on Ravelry and Instagram. And this week I brought my little co-host. He's not enjoying it so much, but this is my baby Gizmo. He's been cuddling with me all morning because I didn't want to get off the couch. So I figured why not bring him and show him to you guys too. But I think he may go lay on the couch that's right over there. Because he's rotten like that. So he's a little goofy ball. Um, so I'm back. Um, <laughs> didn't mean to take last week off, but we were hanging with family and the weather got crazy and we didn't get home when we had intended to. The tornado warnings came about, so we just kind of hung at their house until the weather kind of passed. So that was a little bit of a crazy weekend last week. But before I get any further, I want to Thank you guys for coming back if you are a returning viewer. And I'd like to welcome all my new viewers this week. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I'm trying really hard to record every week, but life happens sometimes. And I didn't get a chance this week because yesterday, um, April 25th, I vended at the Strawberry Festival in Cabot, Arkansas. So this last week was all the craziness of getting last minute things made and making sure I had everything packed up and ready to go. So it's kind of been a hectic week. So, but I wanted to make sure that I recorded it's afternoon because I slept in a little bit today. Cats woke me up at 8.30. Decided I didn't want to be up. I watched a podcast and I'm like, yep, I'm going back to bed. So I totally curled up on the couch with my puppy and went back to sleep. So this is wake up number two of the day. Uh, the hubs just stepped outside to go mow, so I figured I'd come in and record while he wasn't banging on his keyboard, yelling at his computer playing League of Legends. So I'm sure some of y'all have a family member in the household like that that uh, gets very passionate about the games they play. So I figured while he's out, I can see him out this window because he's mowing the front yard now. Um, I wanted to come in and record for y'all because I have, I missed it last week. And then this was last week was just super crazy. So, but I'm back now. Um, I didn't write show notes. Was going to do that earlier. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm just ready to go record. I was excited to come in here and sit down and talk with y'all. So I'm winging it today. So I'm going to start off, I haven't worked on, well I have worked on a whole bunch of stuff, but I'm still packed up from yesterday, and I was excited to come record, so I didn't unpack anything, but any of the things that I talk about, you can find on my project page on Ravelry. So this last week, I have made, I made some keychains, I made a little golden snitch, it's a free pattern off Ravelry, and I turned it into a keychain, and then I also made this adorable cute little red heart and he's only about this big and I turned him into a keychain as well and then I also finished Baymax if you are familiar with Big Hero 6 I've never seen the movie I don't have kids I don't really keep up with the Disney movies I'm one of those people that I've never seen Frozen but I know it was kind of popular um, I know Rachel Love Knots her sons like the movie, and so I figured, pretty popular movie. Found a free pattern for him, so I whipped him up, and he's super adorable. Let's see, what else did I finish? I apologize if you can hear the lawnmower. Didn't think about that when I came in here to record. Um, hopefully it's not too noticeable, and hopefully the hubs won't be the, by the window very long. Um, what else did I finish this week? I made a couple really cute headbands. Um, I probably, oh, I need to get those on Ravelry still. I don't think I have a project page for those, but they're really cool because they have, they're a tie headband, so they can fit any size head. And so I'm going to turn my ringer off because I forgot to do that too. So that won't interrupt us anymore. Um, I made a couple headbands. They're ones in mustard yellow and ones in navy blue. And they have like little circle medallions that go across the head and then they just tie. So I figured they'd be really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Versatile. So they can fit anywhere from a cute little kid's head to an adult size head. I'll get those up on Ravelry. It was another free pattern that I found. 
Um, I'm all about free patterns here lately. Um, so that's kind of my finished objects for the week. If I remember, I'll try to maybe put some pictures at the end. If not, just hop on over to my Ravelry page at Little Panda 518 and they should all be on my project page. Let's see what I've been working on this week. I really only have kind of one project I've been working on that's kind of had my sole focus. I haven't really knitted or crocheted a whole lot lately. Um, there was two days this week that I didn't even touch yarn. I know, crazy. Um, I just haven't been feeling very good this week and I've been tired. So yeah, two whole days without touching yarn. I don't know what I, I don't know what's been up this week. But what I have been working on, I think last time you guys saw these, I don't remember if this sock had a heel or not, but I have the first sock done now. Um, absolutely love it. Um, it's the Hermione's Everyday Sock. I love the patterning and I love how it's showing up in this yarn. Let me see if I can get that up close enough. It's my first time, I mean this is only my second pair of socks and it's my first time making the Hermione's Everyday. I love the sock. Um, it's a really simple repeat. I can sit, I can talk. Knit group, these are what I work on because I can sit and knit. Except for this last weekend, I think I did more tanking and then I actually did knitting so I don't know what my deal was at knit group. Um, but I put a fish kiss lips heel in these socks. I love it. This is my Regia Floor Mania uh, yarn that I scored off a of stash. And I don't remember the colorway name because you know Regia is awesome with their super numbers for their colorways. But if you go on their website, I think it's like Beach something is the color name way. Colorway name. But I love how it work, how it's working up. So first sock complete minus weaving and ends. And yesterday, I was at the Strawberry Festival. And of course, you know, I always take a project or something to work on. So in between customers, I could relax and knit some. And it brought a couple people over to my booth that I don't think would have come by because they saw me knitting and they were wondering what I was working on. So that was kind of a nice way to make conversation and, you know, bring some people over to my booth. Even though if they didn't purchase anything, they still came over and they got to learn a little bit about knitting. And uh, I corrected some people because they're like, oh, what are you crocheting? And I'm like, I'm knitting. Knitting's with needles, crocheting's with a hook. So I did make a couple of those corrections yesterday. But let's see, before yesterday, all this week I did the cuff into about here. So that's all I had done before yesterday. Well, yesterday I was at the booth for 11 hours, set up, I got there for set up about 7 and I, 7 a.m. and I was able to tear down at 6 p.m. So my sock grew quite a bit. It added this much. So I got to work on all the blue. I got the heel put in, which that's one thing I love about this heel. Um, like I said earlier, it's my second pair of socks, so this is the fourth heel I've ever done. I put this entire heel in without having to look at the pattern. That is how amazing this heel is and how easy it is to remember. Um, I totally surprised myself remembering the boomerang rose. I was so pleased with myself. So I sat there and in between, I even had to take breaks and talk to people as they were coming up to the booth. So I was able, it's a heel that I was able to sit down and pick back up and I knew exactly where I was. Absolutely love the heel. And I am on the foot part now and it's growing quite a bit. So this has kind of been my primary project this week. I just haven't really, well after I got stuff done for the booth, this was my primary project that I've been working on. And I'm actually quite surprised because I still have a pretty, I mean it's losing a lot of the center because I'm pulling out of the center of the cake and it's getting fluffier, but that's still a lot of yarn. 
So I'm gonna have some leftovers, so I may have to join the bandwagon of all these beautiful sock yarn blankets that are coming up. Like I need another project, but that's okay. <clears throat> oh, silly me, I have the tag so I can tell you. It is Colorway 7184. And that's the Floor Mania. So I had that going. Um, let's see, shove that back in the bag since the dog's in here because he likes to roll around in my yarn and get all tangled. But he's being super adorable sleeping over on the couch right now. So that's what I've been working on. Um, I remember last week I showed you guys or maybe it was two weeks ago. I showed you this little guy. And then I have decided that I need help naming him for my pattern. I put up a, f a post or a thread in my Ravelry group that's stitching you in more podcasts. So jump on over there and look for the thread that says I need help, I think is what I called it. And this little bear, because I'm going to release him as a pattern, but I want help naming him. So jump in the Ravelry group, give me your ideas, and let me know what he should be named. Um, he is a pattern that I am working on. I'm going to make a few more alterations of his body area. Not totally in love with this section of him. So I'm going to work on a few adjustments and then I'm going to work on getting him released. He came about because I am going to be teaching a stuffy class at the Arkansas Fiber Festival in September. So he is going to be, I think I'm gonna have a couple options possibly, but he is gonna be the main one that I'm gonna work on for my class, I think. I may change my mind before then. I may design a couple more stuffies before my class. But right now, he is going to be what I teach in my class. And I'll be having some more information for the Arkansas Fiber Fest coming up here in a couple weeks. We've got a few more things that we're working on finalizing, and then I'll be able to share all the amazing information with you guys. So, he needs a name. I need some help, so jump over in Ravelry. So, I've got that going on. Um... So you try and do this without show notes, so I'm having to rely on my brain, and I don't know if that's working so well. Uh, Love Knots podcast. She has recorded, I think she's two, maybe three episodes in. I'm sorry, Rachel, I don't remember. I know I've watched all of them. It's just not coming to me, because I know we're kind of recording on, she's doing it every other week, and yeah. So she has two or three episodes out now. And she is doing a massive giveaway, and it was working on relaunching her Etsy shop and launching her podcast. If you're watching this anytime soon, her giveaway ends on May 5th, so visit her Facebook page. You can find her as Love Knots, L-U-V-K-N-O-T-Z, and she has a giveaway tab that you click on, and it shows you all the steps that you need to do in order to enter her giveaway. She's got some fabulous things. She made some stitch markers. I'm giving away a project bag. Um, she's giving away some yarn. She knit a cute little turban that I can't wait to get my hands on that yarn so I can knit a matching one. She, it's a massive, I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but it has it all listed. Oh, and she did a polymer clay crochet hook that's a size H. She has an amazing giveaway, so be sure to go find her on Facebook, go find her podcast. Her podcast, she also has a group on Ravelry for her podcast, which is Love Knots. She's amazing, go watch her. Um, so that's what I've finished, what I've been working on, what's coming up. So that there's so many projects all around in my brain that I'm like so excited to get started on. I showed you guys the yarn for my sweater that Rachel dyed for me. So I think since my booth is over, I may get that cast on at some point this week because I've been dying to make that sweater since like September and now I've had the yarn for a couple weeks and my booth is over and I don't have another booth scheduled anytime soon. So I'm going back to working on stuff for moi. Um, cause last year I hardly made anything for myself and I would see all these other podcasters that always have fantastic things that they're always wearing on their podcast that they've made 
And I'm like, I've made a lot of stuff, but I really don't have anything to show for it. So that's kind of my mantra for the year, is I think it's gonna be a really selfish crafting year. Um, so I'm gonna make the Winter's Tree sweater. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. It's in my queue. If it's probably the easiest way to find it. And I'm gonna make it in that fabulous lime green and teal yarn that Rachel dyed that I showed, I believe on my last podcast. So I've got that project coming up and I'm also going to work on the stripe. Let me make sure there's nothing on the front page. I'm gonna make the stripe Study Shawl by Vera Vacamelli. Valamaki, Valamaki. Yeah, it's one of those. I know I totally butchered that, but I tried. So I'm gonna make that. Rachel is also making hers, and I know she's already got a really good start on hers. And this is in a cute little drawstring bag that I made. Absolutely love it. My friend got the fabric for me, so it's all the knit stitches. And it has my favorite colors. It's got the teal and like the seafoam green. And then of course the seafoam green top. And I ran by Michael's hmm, probably about a week ago. Bad thing that's on my way home from work. And I picked up the yarn that I'm gonna do it in. I am using the Loops and Thread Wool Like. It's like my favorite yarn, like fingering yarn from a big box store. So this is the where is it going to tell me? They call this mauve. I call it like a burgundy cranberry color, but I like that. And then this is the charcoal color. Let me see if I can. So my stripe study will be these two colors, which I absolutely love those together. I've never done short rows besides in a heel of a sock. So it's going to be something different. It's an asymmetrical, which I think you can see in the picture when I held it up a little bit ago. Let me see. There we go. So it's kind of an asymmetrical with the short rows and the off-centered where the stripes kind of change. I love that look. So it's going to be on my needles here pretty soon. I'm also still working on the Rainbow of Doom. Didn't touch it this week, so I figured why bring the pieces in here. So I really need to get back working on that. I just haven't really been in the mood. It's kind of one of those projects that it's like I don't really want to do and I have to force myself to do it. So I kind of have to be in the right frame of mood or right frame of mind. That's the words I was looking for to work on it. So I've got that coming, well, I've got that ongoing. So I've got two knit projects that I'm gonna be casting on probably this week. I'm going to try, possibly try to work on the changes that I want to make to Mr. No Name Bear. And that's what he's named in my Ravelry projects is No Name Bear. So he really wants a name. And I think I'm going to put him out as a paid pattern. But whose ever name I choose, um, I'm going to give them a free copy of the pattern. Because that's kind of what I want to do. So that's kind of my crafting. I didn't do any sewing this week. Actually, the last two weeks, haven't touched the sewing machine. The first weekend I got it, I did a lot of sewing, and so I've kind of taken a little bit of a break from that. Then, let's see, what's been going on in life? Work has been work. The weather's been crazy. If it, I think, Probably 90% of the last two weeks, it's pretty much rained. Thankfully, yesterday for the Strawberry Fest, it, oh, sorry for kicking the camera there. Um, yesterday at the Strawberry Fest, it started out a little chilly and very, very overcast. But then the clouds moved off and we hit about 90 degrees. So it was, and it, I was in under a tent, so it was nice and shaded. And we had an occasional breeze. This, in the morning, the breeze was crazy. Everyone was having to hold on to their tents because they kept wanting to fly off. I kept having to chase some of my items off my table because the wind would pick up and just blow them right off. And then as the day went, the wind calmed down. The, the, 
it was very enjoyable to sit outside and enjoy myself and enjoy the company of the people coming by and talking. Um, it was awesome. It was like the best day, like for what weather wise, it was probably the best day of the year so far. It was super enjoyable. I think after I get done recording and getting this edited, Hubs already has the backyard mode. So I'm gonna go hang in my hammock and work on these socks and enjoy the weather some more because I'm totally playing it lazy today. It's gonna be quite enjoyable that way. Um, the last two weeks, I, the Canadian Knitter, absolutely love her podcast. And she has started hosting some VKNs, which if you don't know what those are, those are virtual knit nights. And I have attended her VKN the last two weeks. Fabulous time. Um, they start, she's Eastern time, so they start about six o'clock my time. And the last two weeks, I was on until 10, 10.30. And the only reason that I had to make myself leave is because I had to go to bed but I could have totally stayed and it was such a fabulous time. you just getting to sit, cause you know when you watch podcasts, you learn a little bit about the person and what their projects are. And it's kind of like you're forming a friendship even though you never really talked back and forth. It's kind of weird, I know, but that's kind of how I feel with some of the podcasts that I watch. And so it was really nice to be able to get in her VKN and actually chat person to person. And that was, it was, awesome. Um, I'm going to make a point of it. My local knit group also normally meets on Wednesday, but when we don't meet, I've been getting in her VKN and I, being her VKNs go pretty late into the evening. Even if I go to my local knit group on Wednesday evenings, when I get home, I can still jump in the VKN and I'm sure there's still going to be people there. I got to meet the ladies from Two Tangled Skeins, which I'm sorry, but I don't remember all of your names. Um, I got to meet JB from JB's Fiber Podcast, something like that. Um, I'll make sure that all these are linked in the show notes on the blog, which you can find. I guess I should have mentioned that earlier. Show notes are at stitchingyouandmore.com and it's stitchingewe and more.com. So you can find all the show notes there and I'll link up um, JB's podcast and Two Tangled Skeins. It was so nice, and I think this last week, um, Marsha from Twitch and Stitch podcast was also there. So it was really nice because I got to meet some of the Canadian podcasters, and also Shelby from the EIN podcast. So it was really fun because it was like a VKN, and then like everyone else was a podcaster. So it was it was really nice to kind of get out and meet some of the other kind of network and meet the podcasters. So that was really fun. And that's where a lot of my sock working has happened to because I haven't been able to work on like projects where I actually had to focus. So I can't really work on my stuffies during the, during the VKNs. So my socks get a lot of work during that time. So I'm looking forward to this Wednesday getting in another one of her VKNs, whether it's after my knit group or if I get in right when it starts up. And with that, I think that there's another night during the week I would like to do a VKN. And I know I've posted the thread in the Ravelry group. And I've had, I think, one response on it um, from Emma from Yarn on Over podcast, which she's super cute. I love seeing that the younger generations are enjoying the fiber arts community. And I just, I love seeing it. Because I know I've talked on here before that that's kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to start this podcast was to not only make a connection with other people in the fiber arts community. I ha I'm lucky to have a very amazing local knit group, but I know that it's amazing to even branch out from that and meet other people who have the same love for the fiber arts. So I'm loving being able to meet the other podcasters and meet people through Ravelry, but also another reason for this podcast is to make sure that the love for the fiber arts community doesn't die out. Um, you know, I'm still fairly young myself, but I know that it's really important to this craft that it gets passed down. And I never have plans of having children. 
so I don't really have another generation to pass it down to per se but I think if we keep the love for the fiber arts community and that's one thing that there's a million podcasts out there and I love that because it's all these different people sharing their love for this trade that we need to make sure that get, keeps getting passed down through the generation so it doesn't die off. So that's kind of my little soapbox moment. So I've got that. Um, I was expecting this to be a little bit longer since it's been two weeks since I podcast and I'm trying to remember if there's anything that I have forgotten. I got a new podcast in the meantime since I've recorded last. It's The Knitting Expat. It's Mina. She is originally from London and she's currently living in Bahrain. I think that's how you say it. It's over by Saudi Arabia. Um, she's got like six, seven podcasts out now. I, of course, I binge watched all of them back to back. And I, it's funny just to kind of, I mean, it's not funny, but it's kind of interesting to hear about, you know, other countries. It's not funny, it's interesting. That's the word I was looking for. I love to learn about other countries, and I found that I've been watching more and more international podcasts as I'm coming across them. And so it's, her husband works in Saudi Arabia, but they live in Bahrain. And it's, I can understand the reasoning behind that, because she doesn't want to live in Saudi. Totally understand. Um, but I just, I love learning about different cultures, different countries, and I don't know if I've talked about it on the podcast before, but when I was in high school, I was a host sister my junior year of high school. So we had Om, um, is from Thailand, and she lived with us for my junior year of high school, and she took mainly senior classes. And so it was really interesting because I got to learn about a whole other culture and country in the comfort of my own home. And it's, it was a fabulous year having her here because she cooked for us. She taught us about, you know, her culture and her day-to-day -day life. And we still stay in touch over Facebook. Absolutely love it. She's doing fabulous. Um, you know, so even though she was here for only a year, we've made that lifelong connection. And so I love that about hosting. Um, if, if, you know, if Randy and I ever get in that spot again to where... Maybe it would be something we'd be interested in. I'd love to host again. I think that would, I think being a host family is an amazing experience. So, and that was, it was tons of fun. Apparently I'm at a lack for words today because I seem to be reusing every word. So I don't really know what's going on with that. Um, i trying to think, I feel like I have so much more to talk about but then I didn't write it all down and I'm sure I'm forgetting stuff take a sip of my apple pie coffee which is amazing it's by Dunkin Donuts as if, if anyone is wondering looking over at my yarn let's see I don't know I think that's it didn't expect this week to be this short maybe next week I'll have some more chattiness going on I think I'm gonna wrap up go work on getting this edited and go hang out in my hammock. So with that, keep on stitching y'all.